Can I just start by saying your first and last name? How you spell it for me? Zelina Ahmed, Z A L E E N A, and the last name is A H M E D. Okay. Can you start by just walking me through? You know, you leave your apartment with your dog on Saturday. What happens after? Um, so it's normal every night routine where we go walking and we always walk a specific path um, at least for the past three years and that area is chosen because it's well lit and it's high traffic being that it's close to the metro and there's another apartment complex that's in that direction so there's a lot of people that tend to be out. So I was walking, um, usually I'm on the phone with someone while I'm walking. Um, and. At the moment when this person pulled up to me, I had just put my phone into my pocket um, and the person that approached me, it was a young male. Um, he had a tan sweatshirt on, tan beige brown, that family. Um, and he had like a COVID mask on and a hood, but it was chilly that night. I also had a hood on and I didn't think anything of it because a lot of folks are wearing masks now with uh, COVID spiking again. Um, and initially he put his hand out um, and he said something, but I couldn't understand what he was saying because of the mask. And because he put his hand out, I thought he was like asking for help or directions. So that like caught me off guard because I didn't think that it was anything um, uh, criminal or like in a, anything with a bad intention. So. Um, um, he lifts up his sweatshirt and then to show me that he had a gun on him and his waistband. So at that point I yell like, no way, this is not happening. Um, and then I go and I pull my dog back because I've seen like the videos and stuff of all the dog nappings and I knew I didn't have anything on me besides my phone. So he grabs uh, the leash and my dog has a retractable leash. So at that point um, I pulled back because I was able to get some distance from him, but my dog was closer to him, but my dog tensed up. So he pulled out of his harness. So then I kind of like leapt fo leaned forward to grab my dog and pick him up so then I had my dog uh, in my arm um, and then leash on this hand still attached to me because it's around my wrist so I guess at that point because I was like down on the ground he hit me in the head with a gun the first time so now we're like tr in a scuffle um, and a dark uh, I, I believe it's a minivan, it could have been an SUV of some sort, like a large vehicle comes around the corner and they ask, um, is everything okay? And I was also screaming for help and I was like screaming rape just for like to grab attention. Um, and because that person asked me, is everything okay? I thought that they were trying to help. So uh, there's a clearing in the bushes if we go up that way that you'll see. Um, so I walk through the clearing trying to walk towards this car. To, thinking that they're trying to help me. Then I see that the driver has a mask and a hood on, so then I realize that they're together. So then I start walking in the opposite direction towards the entrance for those other apartments. Um, and then I hear the guy with the gun tell him, just grab the dog. So I think the driver must have pulled me by my hood and that's how he was able to get me back. So then he grabs my dog out of my arm. So now I like chase after him, it's not that far of a distance. Um, and I try to grab onto the driver's door, but I know Notice that the handle is not it's not there so now I stick my right hand into the vehicle to like just try to grab my dog but I, I believe that's when the other guy like got into that car during that whole situation and then they drove off so at that point I'm like dripping in blood I don't even realize it because of everything that's going on and I see the two ladies um, and I asked them why they didn't help um, and they said they didn't realize I needed help so <clears throat> they immediately called 911 and they waited with me until the police and EMS came what's what's going through your mind you know immediately after that and as it's going going on kind of just walk me through your, your thought process so after it happened, I couldn't believe it. Like, I couldn't believe that someone would, one, try to steal my dog. Um, he walks so slow, so it, you could tell, like, he's an older dog. Physically, he may not look it, but his pace is pretty clear that he's an older dog. Um, and then I was also just in disbelief that I was screaming out for help and no one stepped in. And you said this is somewhere you walk by often. Was there any sense of an eerie feeling at all? No, if anything, I felt more comfortable walking because I knew that there was a lot of people in the area with it being Howard Homecoming and there being the marches uh, for everything that's going on. So I didn't think, I didn't even think twice about walking at 10 o'clock in the night on a Saturday. Right, it's a busy time. So police come, you start talking with them. What is, what are the next steps? What happens next? Um, so 
initially there's just one officer and EMS that come on scene and they each ask for my information separately um, and then they directed me directed me to go into the ambulance to get checked out and I was resistant to go because in my I couldn't see the wounds but it didn't feel like it was that bad so I didn't really think there was a need to go to the hospital but EMS then showed me like it was a huge open basically gash in my head um, so they wrapped me up um, then another officer comes in and he starts asking me for like basic information um, then they'd say that I'm going to Howard Hospital and being that I'm still fairly new to the area I asked one of my neighbors from the apartments to come with me and luckily he was able to come so I had some type of support then we get to the hospital there were no wheelchairs present. Um, so initially they wanted to wait for me to walk in a wheelchair, but because there were none present, they asked if like I felt comfortable walking. So I walked in, then uh, two detectives show up and they question me, um, I get a CT scan. Um, and I, like at that point, my fingers and stuff were swollen and it was bleeding from the door, um, but I didn't want to get x-rayed and it's starting to, the swelling and stuff is starting to go down. So um, I probably got home around 1 a.m. after all of this. You're saying today you're feeling physically... So now, I guess, like, so this happened Saturday night. So yesterday, I guess the adrenaline was still pumping because I didn't really get any sleep. I went to bed at 5 a.m. and I was up at 7, printing out flyers and, like, putting them around the neighborhood, um, making po the posts on social media. Uh, so now, last night, my body's starting to relax, and I realized I got hit a lot more than I had remembered. Um, so my neck is hurting now, and I have uh, I have a bad back from, like, previous accidents, so that's also hurting, and then, like, along the sides. And I was watching other news coverage, you know, of this story already. You mentioned to, to someone that Max was, had been, had gotten away from you before. Yeah. You so I actually had Max registered as a service animal in 2018, because at that, um, in July of 2018, we were all in a fatal car accident where I lost my mom. Um, so. Max and my mom were in the back seat, so he's literally like the last person that was with her prior to the accident. Um, and during the hustle and bustle, EMS and um, the police weren't concerned about finding the dog, so they ended up leaving him in the woods. And the entire time, my dad and I are asking, like, what about the dog? What about the dog? So luckily, it rained that night. Um, and they were able, to, he was able to find his way along the highway and someone picked him up and took him to a shelter and they were able to reconnect us through like the power of like social media posts and people just being good humans. Tell me about what it was like to, to get him back and to feel that relief last time. Well, given how everything transpired with the accident, I knew he was alive because I heard the barking, but given like, I didn't know where we were. We, it happened in South Carolina. Um, and because it was on a major highway, I thought he probably would have just been run over, so I wasn't hopeful. So once we got reunited, it was just like, I couldn't even describe it. And then ever since then, he's just been really close to me because it's the last thing that I have and it kind of helps me when I'm missing my mom. And I'm sure people can relate, just like having a pet, it's an indescribable feeling where they just like understand you on an emotional level more than anything else. So, um, Part of the move um, coming out here that helped made it a lot easier as well because at least it was like one piece of my family because outside I didn't have anyone that lives within the DMV area. It's just friends that I've made along the way. Luckily a lot of great friends that have been able to su provide support, but he's my only piece of family out here. Wow, I'm, I'm so sorry about your Thank mom. you. I'm so glad you were able to get him back and that he's been such a, a rock for you, you know, after something so... Yeah. So, so everyone that knows me, they see Max and I together all the time. I take him everywhere with me. Even that day we had went to Target earlier. I got a haircut. We went shopping. Like that dog goes with me everywhere. So when they don't see me with him, it's unusual. Yeah. You and your dog are a unit. I, yeah. I get it. You guys are. You guys are one. Yeah, someone even pointed out, like subconsciously, I didn't even realize um, the day that it happened. I had a sweatshirt that had his picture on it, and I like I wasn't even aware. If you could talk to the two guys who took Max, what would you say to them? What would you say? To them? So I've been thinking about this a lot. Everybody keeps asking, like, are you traumatized? Like, are you afraid? Like, 
uh, like they're and they've been describing them as like criminals and evil people. So I know like I can't speak to their character. I don't know what their motivation or intent was behind this. And I know like people do bad things when they're desperate. So I'm just hoping that they had a bad situation and maybe they were desperate. But I want to believe that they're good people and like given everything that's going on and just like everybody reaching out and seeing how much Max means to me that like like something in their heart will find some compassion and have them return him to me because I don't think that they're bad people maybe just in a bad situation and I don't want anything bad to happen to them I just really want my dog back that's a really incredible way to to look at things I think a lot of people might not be so nice so there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens in the world and like we can't control it. You just have to believe that people are intrinsically good. So that's just what I believe. And I was also starting to blame myself for like wanting to help this person initially when he came up to me because I thought maybe he was lost or he needed something. And I just like, I always believe that people are good. So I'm just hopeful that they'll be good people and turn him in. And Max needs special care. He's an older dog. He'll actually be 14 on Halloween. So hopefully we're able to reconnect before then and celebrate his birthday together. Um, his vision is declining, so he doesn't walk really late at night or I choose areas that are really well lit so he can sleep. Um, he has arthritis, so he takes joint supplements. His liver is also um, starting to deteriorate, so he's taking supplements for that. He had some teeth removed, so like I have to, I have actually hand feed him um, like soft food so that I can make sure he's not uh, uh, hurting his gums when he's eating. Um, and then he recently had a skin tag removed from his eye. So like under his eye, there's like a little bloody patch because the hair is still growing out. He's, a, he's an old man and he needs you. Yeah. What do you say to, you know, just to other dog parents living in D.C. who are going to see your story and think, oh, my God, this could happen to me? I honestly don't even know how to give anyone any type of like comfort or relief or advice because... There's like DC, I always, being that I'm from New York, I always say that New York is pet tolerant and DC is pet friendly. Like people are so welcome here about dogs everywhere. And like people love their animals way more than they do in New York. So I truly, truly appreciate the outreach and support here. And everyone's feedback and comments have been so great because like they understand how I feel and I really have no advice for them whatsoever because I believe that people probably would have reacted the same way. Uh, a lot of people are questioning like why I, I chose to fight back if this guy had a gun, but inst instinctively I didn't even think about it. Like I just saw someone trying to grab something that's important to me and I tried to defend myself. Yeah, as you should. Is there anything that we haven't talked about? Any questions that I haven't asked you that I should have? Um, I don't think so. It's like... It's all a lot and I just appreciate everyone's support and like uh, attempt to get this out and like just get this out in the public and for everyone to know and everyone's help and, like um, he has his own Instagram page separate from mine because I don't want people to think I'm dog obsessed which I guess having his own page makes me a little obsessed but that's also been really helpful because I know like outside of the US be being that he's a West Highland Terrier a lot of people are picking it up and reposting it so that's been really really helpful um, I know the detectives are they work in off shift so there's been a little bit of delay in them getting some of that information so hopefully today was a little bit more successful but I'm just waiting to hear at this point thank you thank I appreciate you. you i want to get a few more shots you guys can just keep talking to me yeah, sure so what are some of max's favorite toys and things? What are some oh he loves like do? the latex balls mm -hmm. so because of his teeth he doesn't like like those hard plastic ones it's the really soft latex ones and he doesn't really care for stuffed animals it's like all those latex toys he's a big napper which i am as well they always say that your dogs um, kind of mimic the owner's personality. So he's really calm and uh, friendly. Uh, and that's also probably something that attributed to it because when the guy came up to him, Max like was trying to be friendly as well and like sniff the guy out. So that's why the guy was like able to grab onto the leash. That makes sense. I mean, Max has a uh, an owner who loves him. He knows love. Yeah. My dog would have done the same thing. He wouldn't have got any 
and Max, yeah, Max is so loved by like everyone that he meets because he's just so cute and like he's not aggressive. I mean, probably why he was an easier target because they knew he wouldn't have uh, fought back. When they picked him up in the car, it was so horrifying. Like he just had like his little body and they just like threw him in there. Oh, it's oh it's uh well the swelling is going down now, but it's just like it was all bloody and there's like a few little lacerations that are healing. You say that's from the leash? No, this is from the door. From the door. Yeah. His leash was on my wrist, which is why I wasn't able to like let go freely. Yeah, so I don't know if you have a harness or you put your a collar on your dog. So like sometimes when they tense up their shoulders, they're able to wiggle out of it. Yeah, so that's what he did. No, I, my dog does the same thing all the time. I can't even. 